Leo's insights are presented to challenge, inform, and encourage you in your quest to break free from school-based approaches to education. Building upon a foundation of unschooling, we sincerely hope these insights help you to consider how education can be truly unlimited. I realize that this story should likely be in the archives as ancient history. After all, it is about an old man's personal experience in school many decades ago. However, some things actually don't change much. And if they do, it is not usually for the better. I share this story with you because I have seen recurring variations on this theme during the many years I've been involved in education, and I believe you need to hear this. I didn't learn to read when I was supposed to. However, I was intelligent enough to be able to fool my teachers into believing I had developed the skill. I was not interested in those silly Dick and Jane primers with pansy names like Spot and Puff for pets. They, they just did not appeal to me. I do, however, remember panicking in grade three when there was more to memorize in order to create an illusion of competency and I started fearing that I would soon get busted. However, it was my intense desire to learn more about the creatures around me that really exposed my lack of skill in reading. The school did not provide me with a compelling reason to want to learn to read. My wanting to learn and to learn more about birds in particular made me realize I needed to make sense of the letters, words, sentences, and paragraphs that accompanied the pictures in the book about birds that interested me. I taught myself to read at age eight because I was ready. And I was ready because I had a reason to be. I didn't learn to read with Dick and Jane. I learned with the Birds of America because it had something to teach me about something I was interested in. This is worth repeating, so, so please listen. I didn't learn to read with Dick and Jane in school. I learned by wanting to comprehend the complex information in the Birds of America because it had something to teach me about something I was interested in. Although I knew I was different from the rest, I was too busy inventing survival techniques and, and far too disinterested to find out what made my teachers say I was intelligent but unteachable. Perhaps I'm older than the condition, but I would be nearly 50 years old before I would discover that I had a learning disability called dyslexia. I wasn't actually learning disabled as I was learning an enormous amount about birds and nature in general. I was school disabled, to be sure, because the school did not know me or the way in which I learned or what interested me. Many years later, when I read Ron Davis's book, which called dyslexia a gift rather than a condition, I finally became comfortable with being me. As the years went by, I, I came to understand that I was not inferior to other more normal people as much as I was different. I discovered that I was able to do what others could not. And as a consequence of my being different, I had a special obligation to use my gifts and talents to make a difference in this world. I pretty much kept my condition to myself until a few years ago when HSLDA Canada had a feature article about dyslexia in one of its magazines. It contained a picture of a, we assume, dyslexic girl with a big tear on her face. I was so upset by what I saw and read that I pulled my support for that organization as I perceived that they were much more interested in normalizing school in all of its facets than in advancing a biblical alternative. I don't believe anything has changed in this case, but I digress. What actually put those big tears on that child's face? She likely did, did not know she was dyslexic. She was comfortable with who she was until someone told her that something was wrong with her. It was only then that she realized that, that God had made a mistake when he created her. At least that's how others viewed her. 
That's what put that tear in her cheek. Boy, did I connect with her and her tears. Flashback to my younger years. How do you think she felt? The article continued with a bunch of science to support the agency that would fix her infirmity for a fee, of course. A child's inability to meet the absurd and immeasurable expectation of professionals deemed her to be disabled or deficient. Who would do that except those who insist on conformity or those who have found a way to capitalize on it? I'm not saying that there are not good programs available to assist people with their learning if in keeping with who they are and how they learn. But I deplore making those who do not fit standard expectations into freaks or as having conditions that need fixing. Perhaps that explains why I bristle when parents try doing the same. God does not make junk and he does not make mistakes. We've talked about that already. No child is junk. No child is a mistake. No child needs fixing. That kind of thinking is rooted in the belief that we are nothing more than a cosmic collision of molecules that did not quite collide properly, resulting in something man in his superior intelligence is able to repair. It is rooted in a deeply religious belief in nothingness rather than God. No wonder there are tears on the cheeks of those beautiful children. Who wants to be fixed by people demonstrating this level of ignorance? No child is born stupid. They are labeled stupid by stupid information and or informants who believe stupid things. Learning to read was a pivotal point in my life, much as it would be in anybody else's life. But for me, it was a struggle. I had developed far too many dyslexic survival strategies as a consequence of my being forced to read before I was ready. What it took was my passionate desire to learn about nature in general, and birds in particular, to provide the impetus which led to my desire to learn the skill. Once there, I became a voracious reader. Just to make the point, the work I did as a child before even graduating from high school was eventually purchased by the government of Alberta and made part of the Royal Alberta Provincial Museum. This was accomplished after I got home from school, which was to me a needless distraction from my work. It is hardly front page news that everybody is different. However, when there is a one-size-fits-all school system, should someone not fit, they are deemed to be misfits that need fixing. Combine that absurdity with the understanding that the more misfit we can make the child, the more value they have in a special needs industry, and you will understand why I have such profound misgivings about many of the special needs defined by schools. All children can and will learn to read when they are ready. And in their own way, all they need is encouragement. They do not need to be made into failures and freaks like I was or that cute girl with a big tear on that magazine cover. Celebrate the differences God has created and, and do not be conformed to this world. Provide opportunity to master weaknesses, but let them fly with their strengths. And remember, God does not make junk. He doesn't make mistakes. We trust you were blessed by today's presentation. For more helpful information to guide you in your home education journey, please visit educationunlimited.ca and leogomal.com. Be sure to like us and share us on Facebook.